I'm Justin. I'm Jess. We currently live in our 17-foot travel trailer and we're making our way across the United States. Today we're in St. Louis, Missouri. Well, actually we're in a farm in Illinois right outside of St. Louis. But up until four years ago, I lived in St. Louis my entire life. This city has so much to offer and we wanted to bring you along and show you how to spend one awesome day in St. Louis. So let's hit the road. Our first stop of the day is Rooster in South Grand. South Grand is in South St. Louis and has been a commercial district for over 115 years. It's now widely a culinary attraction in St. Louis and boasts more culinary diversity than Epcot Center in Disney World. But we're here to try something a bit more local. In fact, it was invented right here in St. Louis. It's called the Slinger, so let's check it out inside. Unfortunately, the history of the Slinger has been lost to time, but it's believed that it was invented in the 1950s and now has been a staple in late night and breakfast diners across St. Louis. It usually consists of some kind of carbohydrate like bread or biscuits, chili, eggs and meat. There's a lot of different varieties of slingers now and the one that we have has gravy, potatoes, sausage, tofu eggs, and toast and we are ready to dive in. It has been years since I've had one of these. I'm so excited. Oh wow, it is a pile. <laughs> this is the perfect hangover food. Oh, oh wow, I have some on mine. <laughs> Our server was just telling us that the St. Louis Slinger is such a cult favorite that he'll literally have a table of eight people come in that will all get the exact same dish. I don't blame him. We finished up our gravy covered breakfast and drove our full tummies over to one of the most iconic monuments on the planet. Of course, it's not a visit to St. Louis without a stop at the Gateway Arch. As a little bit of a history lesson, this idea of a memorial along the Mississippi Riverfront was conceived by Luther Eli Smith in 1933. It took over 30 years to raise millions of dollars and this arch design was finally picked out of over 170 submissions. Construction of the arch was completed in 1965. Now this 630 foot arch is the tallest monument in the United States and the tallest arch in the world. Even though it doesn't look like it, it's perfectly square. It's 630 feet across and 630 feet tall. We're visiting on a Wednesday. We were able to just purchase our tickets and walk right on. But if you're coming at a different time, we've definitely visit on weekends where the tram tickets totally sell out. So you you might want to buy them ahead of time. After picking up our tickets, we headed underground to the Arch's incredible museum, but only had a few minutes to explore the exhibits before we needed to make our way over to the tram elevators for our scheduled trip to the top. Before getting on the tram car, you're told a brief history of the Arch and then lined up to get on your car. Each one squeezes five riders into its tiny space. This experience probably isn't for you if you're claustrophobic. Jess and I got one all to ourselves, but if you're visiting on a busy day, like on the weekends, or don't conveniently have exactly four other people in your party, you'll likely be placed in a car with strangers. So we are currently moving up the arch's legs. What's interesting is this contraption was actually designed by somebody who had absolutely no engineering experience. They just somehow got hooked up to the architect. And the idea is, is that it's a combination of a Ferris wheel, escalator, and elevator all at once because you can't take an elevator to the top due to the nature of the legs. That's so cool. I've never noticed the stairs. Would you climb up to the top? <laughs> uh, 630 feet. I guess that's the kind of hikes that we do. Yeah, yeah, we do yeah, we can do it. Wow. This is kind of more fun though. It's hard to see it, but as you go up, you keep rocking back and <laughs> forth. So it's not a fluid motion to the top. It's really bizarre. After you. Once you reach the top, you'll get to see stunning views of the St. Louis skyline to the west and the Mississippi River in Illinois to the east, albeit out of comically tiny windows. The windows are actually so small for a reason. To install the very centerpiece, the builder had to exert over 500 tons of pressure to pry apart the two legs of the arch. Windows that are any larger would shatter under this tremendous pressure. Your time at the top is pretty brief, lasting no longer than 10 minutes, so be sure to grab those selfies and drink in the views before making your way back down. Taking a tram to the top of the arch is incredibly affordable. It's only $12 with America the Beautiful Pass or $15 without one. However, if you're a real budget traveler, you can visit the museum at the bottom of the arch for totally free. It was just redone in 2018 and every single time I visit, I wish that I had more time because it's so impressive. I would recommend budgeting at least two hours to explore the museum and an hour to take the tram ride while you visit. There's also a variety of other activities that you can do at the arch, including watching a documentary film or taking a Mississippi River cruise. One of the things we miss so much about St. Louis 
is the incredible food and beer scene, including our favorite restaurant, Lana's Little Eats, which is home to the famous giant rice paper wrap. The owner, Lana, is one of the only restaurateurs that we know of that's brought Chinese Hill Tribe food to St. Louis. It's an incredibly flavor-rich cuisine, mixing Southern Chinese food with Northern Thai food. In fact, she spends a tremendous amount of money having her brother in China ship all of the spices she needs to make her sauces to St. Louis. And these are the giant rice paper burritos. They're stuffed with everything that you'd normally have in a rice paper wrap, except they're over three times the size and loaded with tasty goodness. Oh! Is that that good? Oh my God, it's better than I remember. This has stir fried rice, leafy greens, spicy tofu, and lots of flavorful goodness. This is Lana's special spicy sesame sauce. It is probably, not kidding, the best sauce that I've ever had in my life, and it's usually the first thing I come to find every time I make my way to St. Louis. Mm, 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 mm. We are not filming, and Justin just keeps happy dancing over there. Mm, mm, mm. After lunch, we were looking for a chill activity to walk off our food babies. Food babies. <laughs> St. Louis is one of the oldest cities west of the Mississippi and home to some incredible historic architecture reflective of the city's French and German roots. So we headed to the nearby Lafayette Square neighborhood to stroll around and enjoy its iconic Victorian architecture. All right, we're going, we're recording. <laughs> we love St. Louis's architecture and the Lafayette Square neighborhood is one of the best places to see its beautiful historic homes like these. St. Louis originally started as a French fur trapping settlement in the 1700s. Lafayette Square, a famous neighborhood in St. Louis, has kept many of its French influences. Its park, Lafayette Park, was founded in the 1830s. It's the very first park in St. Louis and the very first park west of the Mississippi. Most of the homes in Lafayette Square were built in the 1860s. Unfortunately, over the next century, many of them fell into the disrepair, but in the 1960s, young families started to move back into the city and refurbishing the homes to their Victorian glory. Now these homes are affectionately known as the Painted Ladies. Obviously, people live in these homes, so unfortunately, you can't go inside. However, once a year, some of the gracious residents of Lafayette Square neighborhood open up their homes for a parlor tour during Christmas. Even if you're not architecture nerds like us, Lafayette Square is worth exploring thanks to the many wine bars, restaurants, and breweries that flank its streets. One of our absolute favorite things about St. Louis is how many things there are that you can do that are totally free, one of which is the Laumeyer Sculpture Park. The Laumeyer Sculpture Park was founded in 1976, making it one of the first and the largest dedicated sculpture parks in the entire country. Now there's over 65 sculptures here that you're free to roam around and interact with. Laumeyer Sculpture Park has three different hiking trails where you can actually interact with the sculptures dating back as far as the 1960s. Let's check it out. The artwork behind me is called Cromlick Glen. It kind of was reminding me of Native American mounds. There's several of them in this region. There's one right across the river called Cahokia Mound. But per the sign, the artist made these as an homage to the famous temples at Angkor Wat. Art is subjective. Many of the cities in this area, from Memphis to Kansas City, and of course St. Louis is known for their barbecue. St. Louis barbecue is distinctive for being more tomato based as well as being a little bit more vinegary than some of the other cities in this area. We're here to enjoy this St. Louis barbecue at Smoky Moe's. They're actually known for having an entire plant-based barbecue menu, so we're gonna go check it out. Something unique about St. Louis style barbecue, it's usually cooked faster than other styles that you'd find in the Midwest and sauced afterwards. Jessica and I like it spicy, so we're trying the hot barbecue sauce. We're gonna be trying the ribs sandwich and the jackfruit sandwich, so let's dig in. This looks really good. Oh. Wow. That's really good. Excuse me. <laughs> the texture is so impressive for not actually being meat. That's really amazing. That's smoky and delicious, just a little spicy, definitely tangy. Wow, that's some really good sauce. Whenever there's mac and cheese on the menu, you know we will be ordering it. Uh, we also got cheesy bread, all of the cheese, and uh, like Justin said, a jackfruit sandwich. The barbecue tracker is really good. <laughs> <laughs> In case you couldn't hear, Jess said it was good. <laughs> 
it would be wrong to visit St. Louis without exploring some of its world-class beer scene. In 1852, Anheuser-Busch, everyone's favorite light beer, opened <laughs> in St. Louis. However, now the craft beer scene has absolutely exploded and there's more than 65 craft breweries, including Earthbound. We love Earthbound, not only because it has awesome craft beer, but also because the building itself is built on top of some very unique brewing history. Let's <laughs> hop in there. <laughs> That's a beer joke. Earthbound is built on the exact same site as Cherokee Brewing, which is a brewery that was in St. Louis 150 years ago. They have a log room cellar that you can visit that's actually 45 feet below the surface, but unfortunately it's only open on Saturdays and we're not going to be here. So instead we'll just tell you about the fun beer that we have. This is the Jeff Gold Plum, uh, which is a plum sour, and Justin got the traditional Irish red. <laughs> Our final stop of the day is Forest Park. Forest Park opened in 1876 and is still one of the largest urban parks in the country, even beating out the famous Central Park in New York City. It was actually used for the grounds for the 1904 World's Fair, which spurred the architecture of some of the really cool buildings, such as the art museum behind us. Speaking of which, the art museum, just like many of the other museums in St. Louis, is totally free. History museum. Free. Art museum. Free. Science museum. You get the picture. Yeah. During our time living in St. Louis, we were constantly in Forest Park for things like weddings, outdoor movies, concerts. So we kind of think of it as the beating heart of the city. And so we thought it was the perfect place to end our video featuring St. Louis. We plan on showcasing other interesting cities in the US as we make our way across the country. Be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. And one more interesting fact about the arch, even though it doesn't look like, I keep flapping my arm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> That is a man. Can you guess who that is? <laughs> once a year, the gracious... However, once a year... How... You can talk with them, or you can hold your hands, uh, but you just can't flap them or hold them behind you. <laughs> During your time living in St. Louis. I hope you can see why we love St. Louis. Get it? I. It's a big eye. Do you like it?